So, what do you know about Freemasonry? There's a spiritual battle, and the enemy will use anything that he can that came through your bloodlines to prevent you from standing up for Jesus and to fulfill your calling that you have for him on earth. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. A new world order. A new world order. Of a new world order. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Instead of all these different gods, maybe there's one God who manifests himself and reveals himself in different ways to different people. You know, what about that? You don't have to believe in Jesus Christ, uh, any religion, just so long as you believe in God uh, and be a Mason. These are just the holy books our leaders pray to. I'm broken for people who abuse the name of Jesus, abuse the church, abuse the gospel, not for the glory of God, but to glorify themselves. Right, so now we are at Kundalini in Freemasonry. Now, it is not a coincidence, and Eben Swart in his range about Freemasonry also mentions that, that there are 33 degrees in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, and there's also 33 bones in the human spine. And at first when I heard Eben said that, I, th I thought, oh, yeah, I know, no, it can't be. And actually, when you count it, it's true. It's true. Again, not a coincidence. In the first three degrees, the Kundalini demon or spirit is activated. And you get infected by the, by the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And in most Freemasons that have only gone through the first three degrees, they will, and even Freemasons that are, that have, are now out of Freemasonry, they are no longer Freemasons. They are converted into Christ and they've resigned from Freemasonry, they will complain of lower back pain. Often. Kundalini. Kundalini. And how it can be explained according to the, to the tracing board. Um, can you remember the first tracing board of the first degree? Entered apprentice. There was the three columns. Can you remember that? Now that depicts the three channels that the people in the occult will say there's three spiritual channels in your back. It's the Ida channel, the Pingala, and the Shushumna channels. In the first degree ritual of the entered apprentice, it is said that the female or Ida channel is activated. In the second degree ritual, the fellow craft, the male or Pingala channel is activated. And when you go through the third degree ritual of the master mason, the Shushumna channel is activated. And then the Kundalini spirit is either awakened in you, because how we can explain that, it's all in our Kundalini DVD, but people that have a strong ancestry of Kundalini or the occult in their bloodlines would already have the seed of Kundalini in them, usually lying at the sacrum, because you were born with that seed of Kundalini in you because of the bloodline curses of witchcraft, the occult, Freemasonry. Okay, but not everybody has that seed of Kundalini in them. So for those who weren't born with it because of the bloodline curses, the Kundalini spirit can merely be transferred. Because you go through the rituals, the enemy sees in the spirit, you go through the rituals, you give consent to this, the Kundalini spirit gets access. So then you get the Kundalini spirit. We are going over this quickly, fairly quickly, because you can get more information on Kundalini in our DVD. And there's also a teaching on our webpage that you can download for free. Now, what did C.W. Leadbeater say? He was a 33rd degree Luciferian, one of the founding members of Freemasonry. He said, in secret organizations, human beings are busy with evolution and evolution process towards becoming a super human being. And according to him, your karma has to improve. That has got to do with reincarnation. Eh? Your karma is your character. 
the ladder of evolution has to be climbed. That's that Jacob's ladder. When you get to the top, you have become a god. The kundalini has to be stimulated. And human evolution has to be accelerated. So they say when, once you get the kundalini spirit, and that is what you get in the first, first three degrees, that kundalini spirit, which is the counterfeit Holy Spirit, will help you to accelerate further in this growth of becoming a full-blown Luciferian. Kundalini illumination is in, initiated through the grades of Freemasonry. So according to them, you will get more and more illuminated the further you go through the grades. And they can all astral project. Now these high up, high degree Freemasons, they can astral project. And that is when your spirit leaves your body. Now God does not allow this. In his word he says, only when you die, the silver cord will be cut. While we are on earth as human beings, our soul, our body and our spirit should not be separated. It's not in God's will. But by demonic power, by the spirit of Kundalini and other demons, these high-ranking Freemasons can astral travel, and they all do. We can really, if we have to tell you how many times in sessions when we encounter demonic soul copies of high-ranking Freemasons in people, we also pick up that their astral spirit is somewhere here. And if we ask the question, is you, are you out of your body? Is the astral spirit around here? Then they often say yes. And sometimes we even get that astral spirit that enters the person's body that we are ministering to. How can they do that? Because the demonic soul copy is there. And the bloodline curses may not yet have been broken, so there's an open door. And then sometimes that astral spirit comes into the person that we are ministering to. We often find that. I know it may sound to you ridiculous or far-fetched. We often get it. We often get it. So just know that, and even the people who are Freemasons, uh, the pastors and the ministers, they can astral travel. And they do. Then there's many false prophets, which we are not going to go into, which they can astral travel, and they do. C.W. Peter says this. He says, astral projection, your spirit leaves your body with full consciousness, and your spirit is only connected with your body and soul by a silver cord. This is from the mouth of Peter. Homosexuality and sexual confusion, or androgenity, is caused by the kundalini spirit. The kundalini spirit, if you are highly infected that, that, with that, it, it, cause, it causes, amongst others, sexual confusion. And the people that are homosexual, unfortunately, all of them have got the, the kundalini spirit. They have it. And we've seen it manifest in people that are homosexual that we've ministered to. Because that kundalini spirit can also be transferred by homosexual acts. There's various ways that this spirit can be transferred from one person to another. Sexual perversity, homosexual acts also transfers that, homo, that uh, kundalini spirit. Your third eye gets opened so that you can see into the spiritual realm. Remember now that it's not us saying this to you now. C.W. Peter said this already back then when he wrote it. When you are going through these grades of Freemasonry, these degrees, and you get to the kundalini spirit, it causes your third eye, which is a demonic thing, it is here, it's a membrane, according to the people in the occult, that sits between your brows here. And it causes that spiritual eye, it's a spiritual eye of Lucifer, it's not from God, to open up, to enable you to see into the spiritual realm. And it is not God's will for us as Christians to see into the spiritual realm. The Lord may from time to time open your spiritual eyes through His Holy Spirit to maybe see something. But it's just to show you something. It's not... In general. Because if in general we are to see what is going on in the spiritual realm around us, we will go crazy. Really. It's not the Lord's will for us because it will steal our peace. We need to have the peace of the Lord in us. We don't need to see them. We know we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. We don't need to see them. But these people whose third eye has been opened, and that, and that is all the high degree Freemasons, their third eye is open. They can see into the spiritual realm. And then it brings illumination. They believe that this kundalini spirit helps them to become illuminated, so-called enlightenment. You become a god. And these people are all interconnected worldwide. Because of this kundalini spirit, because of the fact that they are now spiritually enlightened by way of kundalini, they can pick up in the spirit 
what is going on around the world. They are connected with each other. Just remember once again, the truth of Jesus is we have got the true illumination of Jesus when we became reborn in Christ, when we received the Holy Spirit. That is the true light. That's the true illumination. They've, they've got a counterfeit. That picture just depicts for you how Kundalini is activated. Um, it's freely available on the internet, but we want to warn you, don't go and make a study just of this and focus on this. What you hear today is enough. Don't go, because the enemy would also like to lure you to spend hours and hours on the internet researching these things. You don't need to know more than what we say today. There's no need. There you can clearly see, the, and this is from, I think, a Hindu page or Hindu or Buddhism. They call it the Pingala, the Shushumna, and the Ida, Nadi. They call it the channels the Nadi. And there you can see, uh, once the Shushumna channel is activated, you... The crown chakra. Can you see the chakra on top here? This is the crown chakra. Opens up and illumination starts. So there you can also see there's seven chakras. Can you see all the chakras? It's according to the Hindu faith. But everybody that is not in Jesus actually believes in these things. It's, just, it's only us Christians that know it is a lie from Satan. It is occult uh, information. And it is not for us as Christians. But the Kabbalists know this. The Hindus, the Buddhists, uh, the people in the New Age, they are all familiar with the seven chakras and the illumination that you get via the Kundalini spirit. Freemasonry in our churches today. There we again have the wolf in the sheep's clothing. And we are not. We just want to state this emphatically. We don't want to discredit the church, any churches. But the Lord wants to take our naivety away. We, our eyes must open up and we must... The lie is that we are necessarily safe in a church. The Lord just wants to open our eyes and we should start to ask the right questions and just be aware. We say Freemasonry is alive and well in our churches today. We know of various Freemasons that are in our churches Pastors and ministers in the traditional churches as well as in the, as in the charismatic churches who are Freemasons. Um, Christian leaders are led to become Freemasons by the spirit of Mammon. We, when we got that high-ranking Freemason, 33rd degree Freemason, in, in those eight people um, that is a leading pastor of a charismatic church, I asked him personally, I said, Why? Why did you become a Freemason? Because initially you must have started in Jesus. He said, yes, I did. We said, were you reborn in Christ? He says, yes, I was reborn in Christ. I asked him, are you still reborn in Christ or have you lost your salvation? And he said, I lost it. So you can, lost, you can lose it. And I asked, why? But why? Why did you become a Freemason? And the answer that we got is money and stature and fame and influence. Power. Sorry, that was the one, the one word. Power. Money and power. I wanted power. I wanted money. You see, that's the thing where the enemy traps them because some people, because it's a fine line between building God's kingdom and starting to go over that threshold to, to start building your own kingdom. And maybe that's the trap where you know, the, these mega churches, it becomes a thing about money. Luring more people into the church, becoming bit, bigger and better and bigger, and more money. More control, more, more power. So that's what they told us. And it's by the spirit of mammon, power and money, working together with the spirits of manipulation, deceit, confusion, and mind control. We say their money, power, and influence are the main driving force of Freemasonry in the church today. You know what the Lord also revealed to us is this information, let's say, for example, about demonic soul copies. We've shared it with some pastors already. And you know what? There's just one big silence. It's hurting your ears, actually. And I asked the Lord, why, Jesus? Why? Th this information will set people free. 
Why is there such a silence? And what the Lord revealed to us is the Buddha, they know very well. If they, if they bring this knowledge into the church and they tell the people, listen, we, we, we found something that you should be aware of and it can set people free, the, the, the spirits of religion in those churches will stir the people up and the church will divide and more than half of the people will leave that particular church and what? Pockets. Suddenly that pastor will have to cut his salary in half. He's not prepared to do that. Not for the sake of the truth. Yeah, that, that's the truth. So it's sad. And then, and then you must ask, you know, what kingdom is being built? Are we building Jesus' kingdom just as far as it suits us? And what did the Lord say in Ezekiel? He said, is it Ezekiel or Jeremiah? Where he said, these people are not the true shepherds of the flock. They are, in Afrikaans, hierlinge. What is it in English? Hirelings, they are hirelings, they're working for money. Yeah, we just leave that in your midst. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you more. We say all Freemasons worldwide are spiritually interconnected. Because you know what, in those people that we found, this prominent pastor that's a 33rd degree Freemason, we also found everybody else in the world. <laughs> Almost everybody. Those that Jay has talked about in the church worldwide, we found them as demonic soul copies. And what they said to us is we are all interconnected. Connected. So if he's here, I'm also here. All our bodies, we draw them in because we are interconnected in the spirit. Now, this guy, Rick Joyner, a knight of Malta. Let's, let's first look at the video and then we can discuss it further. I don't think we need to say anything more. It's, it's, it's shocking. And you know, for me, I'm just talking for myself, the Buddha. If someone is a high-ranking knight of Malta, which he is, I don't trust that. 
I simply don't trust, trust that. We're not saying stop reading the books of Rick Joyner or don't buy it. We're not saying that. We just say be aware and discern. Ask the Lord. Don't just walk into a, a bookstore like Kum and take a book off the shelf. Say, oh, Rick Joyner, yeah, he's, he's a well-known guy. Let me read it. Discern. Pray over the stuff that you read. Ask the Lord and be aware. And not say necessarily everything that he wrote is wrong. That's the shocking thing. Someone the other day said to me, that particular pastor that we know of that is a Freemason, you'll go into his um, church and you'll sit there and you'll listen to a sermon and you, you, you won't find anything wrong. And then you say, but Lord, then what, what's happening here? What's going on? So we're just saying, we're not saying because Rick Joyner is a knight of Malta, nothing that he says can be believed and, and nothing can be read, but just be careful and discern. And I would ask myself, if he's involved somewhere, I would ask myself, what is the enemy's strategy? Because if he's a knight of Malta, he gave the enemy access into his life. There must be some deception and there must be, I will be on my guard. That's all we want to say. And you know, when the Lord called me um, about five years ago, it was at my former working place and me and Jayas were sitting together in my office and I I was reading from my Bible. I was, so, I was so absorbed with Jesus and the Holy Spirit at that time. I was, I was even just reading at work. I couldn't do anything else. I read my Bible. And I said to Jayce, Jayce, what does this scripture mean? And we were talking about scripture. And suddenly Jayce said, wait, wait, wait. I see a vision. I see a vision. And I knew it came from the Lord. And then when he shared with me the vision, he said, I saw it was like an ancient city. And it was just when the Lord called me. Just. I was just baptized. It was in that week after I was baptized. He said, I, was, I see an ancient wall of an ancient city, but, but I see the inside. And there's an enemy that is coming, and it, the people are already over the walls. The, 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 the members of that army of the enemy is already, has already gone over the walls. They are in the city. And the inhabitants of the city is fighting with this enemy. But there's also a person standing with a white robe, pearl white. He said that his words were it's like pearl white, it's like shining white. And that must have been Jesus who commanded the people inside the city to fight back against the, this enemy that, was already, that already found access to the city. And when I listened to this video now, the Lord reminded me about that vision. And he said, look, the Buddha... This is about the fact that the enemy, Satan, and his agents are already in the Christian denominal churches. We, also, we always thought that it's outside, but we must just become aware of the fact that, you know, the enemy through his strat strategy, strategies by way of Freemasonry has already infiltrated some churches. Okay. Freemasonry pastors are inviting false prophets who are also Freemasons to minister the counterfeit Holy Spirit Kundalini in their churches. We are not going to give the names of churches, but fairly frequently there was a big charismatic church that invited someone from overseas, and we know that person, high-ranking Freemason, infected by the Kundalini spirit, and not actually even infected, controlled by the, by the Kundalini spirit. And that person came from overseas. This pastor invited them to come and minister here, and we know for a fact that during those ministry sessions, the Kundalini spirit was ministered. And people that were open to it, and especially the young people that couldn't discern, is this the, the counterfeit Holy Spirit or the true Holy Spirit, they got infected. But it is a strategy of the enemy. It's not a coincidence. It's not something that just happened by mistake. They know exactly what they're doing. The Freemason pastor here, Remember, they are all linked in the spirit. Got an instruction from Lucifer, invite that guy. He must bring this counterfeit Holy Spirit to this church. And what is the further strategy? We say in this way, Satan wants to pollute the church with the Kundalini spirit and gradually pull people away from Jesus and toward the false Jesus, which is Lucifer. Someone also asked us the other day, but if they talk about Jesus... They say Jesus, and there's a verse in the Word of God that says no one that says Jesus is the Son of God can say that other than by way of the Holy Spirit. Nee. 
So I also challenged God, not challenged, but I asked the Lord and said, look at that, your word says, if someone talks about Jesus, it cannot be anything else than through the true Holy Spirit that they get that revelation and say that. But when the, the Lord answered me in that regard, he said, yes, but remember there's a false Jesus. There's a false Jesus in the Spirit, the, the false trinity. So what is the strategy? They want to weaken the church, first the leaders, then the church, and the church must fall. You know what? And in, a, in a session with someone that we ministered, it actually came also from the mouth of a demonic soul copy who was a high-ranking Freemason in the church. And I asked, I said, what is Satan's strategy with you Freemasons in the church? And this is what was revealed. They said, first the pastors must fall, and then the church will fall. And I was so upset by that. For about two weeks after that, I was so upset because I said, my Lord, how can this be? The church fall. How, will, how can you allow that, Jesus? And then the Lord just showed me that one verse in the Bible where, where Peter said, you are the Son of God, the Messiah, the one that was sent. Now, where Peter got that revelation and Jesus said, on this testimony, I will build my church and not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. So I got that revelation that the Lord said, don't worry, Deborah. Satan wants the church to fall. The church will not fall. My true church, my remnant, my bride, I will protect her. She will not be, she will not fall. But maybe the so-called church that, you know, is not truly Jesus' church may very well fall. We just want to show you this short video clip as well of this guy, Todd Bentley. And he was in South Africa a while ago couple of years ago, and people that we know of that are reborn Christians went to Todd Bentley's ministry, and they actually allowed, you know, the laying on of hands and everything, and, you know, we just know that those people must then be infected with the Kundalini spirit, and just ask yourself when you look at this, we, we are not saying out loud that he is a false prophet. You must make up your own mind and ask the Holy Spirit, ask Jesus. But what we are just telling you is there are false prophets out there. And it's a fact. And we must become aware. And don't just run to each and every ministry that comes from overseas and say, here we are and we are now the, the next best flavor. Be sober and vigilant. So let's just look at this. It's not long. <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening. People are getting healed in Lakeland. You need to come and get some. <laughs> And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And I saw him, and the gift of faith came on me. I said, what do I do, God? And God told me to just run him down. So I jumped up in the air, and I went, bam! And I hit him to the ground, jumped onto him, and got into a full mount. Ground and pound. I jumped on the, and I was in a full mount, and something came over me. And instead of punching him, I grabbed him by the neck and started choking him. And I said, come out of him, devil! Come out of him, devil! Now I was in another meeting one time, and I called out this Chinese gentleman. And all of a sudden, I went running down the aisle, and I, I hit this guy so hard, it drove him back several feet. He hit the ground, and his tooth popped right out of his mouth. The pastor was lying on the floor. And I was standing up on the platform and I said, God, I want revival. And he said these words to me, leg drop the pastor. I said, what? He said, leg drop the pastor. Debbie, why don't you tell us what happened? I've been coming here and watching on the internet and it's been 27 days oh my God. that my issues resolved and I, I was so coming here because of a car accident because I had slipped discs. You're healed. And on the stairs, my arms started to get on fire where I'm having the pain from the car accident. 
and I'm fine. While I'm standing there, I got healed in my shoulder and my neck. Hey, guess what? <laughs> you feeling a little drunk right now? <laughs> oh, my God. Something's happening! That's a sign of Kundalini, eh? That's a Kundalini spirit. And um, there was something else that I wanted to say. Yeah, uh, doesn't Paul say in, 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 in God's word, Paul says, the Apostle Paul, our God is a God of order and discipline. He even says in the context of the speaking in tongues, don't all of you come into the church and all together speak in tongues because it will not build up the body. I'd rather go do it in private. If, you, if there's not someone who can interpret what you said, interpret what you've said, rather don't speak in your tongue because it doesn't build the body of Christ. So it's quite, this is quite clear that I think you will all agree with me that this, there's a lot of deception there. Let's put it nicely. It doesn't come from, all from God, but you can clearly see the working of the Kundalini spirit there. And the, the sad thing is, what is this lady's name in Mozambique? Um, Heidi Baker. I've seen videos of her, which is exactly the same. Well, not like Todd Bentley, but you can see the manifestations of the, of the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And we're not saying she's not in God. She's a wonderful lady. They're doing wonderful work in Africa under the poor people. But all we want to say to you today is be sober and vigilant. The Lord said, in the end times, there will be so much deception, even the very elect, Billy Graham, even the very elect will be deceived. So we must be wide awake. That's all we're saying. All we want to say here is, we ask the question, the Fort Tracker Monument in Pretoria, is it a Masonic temple, a Freemasonry temple? You know what, and... What we've experienced with people, especially our Afrikaner people, there's so much pride and a know-it-all mentality in our Afrikaner people that we, will all, we always want to appear as if we know everything. And we want to judge something without having the knowledge. We just want to challenge those people and say, you know, before you say yes or no, get the information. Read that book of Denise Woods. Usti Stormwind. It is also in English, Reap the Whirlwind, but it's unfortunately out of print now. But we have some, some books available. If you want it, you can speak to Zelda. But read that book. We've got this teaching on the internet. You can download it for free if you haven't got money to buy the DVD. You can download the whole teaching for free. The Geestelike Erfenis van die Afrikaner. And allow the Holy Spirit to open it up to you. Watch the DVD. Those of you who can afford it, buy it. Give it to your, to your family members. To watch and to read. Because really in this day and age that we live, in this spiritual season, Jesus wants to bring us out of that deception as well. We have been brought, not only the Afrikaner nation, but everybody in South Africa under very dire, extreme curses of death and destruction because of what our forefathers did, our ancestors. And this question, is the Fort Tracker Monument a Masonic temple, a Freemasonry temple? Go and investigate for yourself. And the Lord will open up your eyes. The Lord will. You know, and you will come to a point where you would say, I, I can't believe that I ever thought that this could be, have anything to do with Jesus Christ and with our God. Now, if I look back, I, I, you know, the deception, it's actually now so clear. How could I have ever thought that this, this was the temple that was built for our God? The Afrikaner Bruderbond, we call it the Bura Masonry. Now, and people tend to think the Afrikaner Bruderbond was a lesser evil than the Freemasons. No. You know what? In a session this week, we got, I think it's that people from the Free State that we ministered to, we actually found a spirit of the Bruderbond, a demon <laughs> of the Bruderbond. And there's a spirit of Freemasonry as well. But we say it's got a lot of similarities with Freemasonry. There's a lot of deception again in the Bruderbond. People that were in the Bruderbond today will come and tell you, no, but we were just an Afrikaner fraternity looking after the Afrikaners' culture and the Afrikaners' history and the Afrikaners' interests. Yes, maybe initially it started out that way. It started good. 
but the enemy hijacked that for his own purposes. The Freemasons inside the Bruderbond were known as die verlichte aksiebeweging. Did you know that? The Bruderbonders that were also Freemasons, they knew of each other and they knew who were the Freemasons and they called themselves die verlichte aksiebeweging. And if you can get hold of that book, um, Volksverrat, of advocate, is it P.J. Pretorius? We got a, a, that book uh, through someone else. Um, it's not in print and it was actually banned. Uh, so I don't think there's a lot of uh, copies of that book available. But there, that advocate Pretorius also s speaks about the verlichte aksiebeweging. Freemasons used the Bruderbond as an organ of itself. So the top-ranking Bruderbonders were also Freemasons, and they were used as an instrument by the Freemasons to, to achieve what the Freemasons wanted to achieve. The Bruderbond was used by the Freemasons to achieve its New World Order agenda for South Africa. When the new dispensation came, when Mandela took over and a demo the full democracy was introduced in South Africa, all of us said, yes, this is wonderful news. But we never, and we, we're not saying that democracy and that everybody's now got a vote is wrong. But we didn't appreciate at that stage that we were being prepared for the new world order and that, that that new government that came into place, together with, you know, that coat of arms, everything is actually going towards a new age government and not in Jesus. Um, the Bruderbonders, who were also CIA spies, you've heard uh, Jay has said this morning, or this afternoon, John Foster, but also Willem de Klerk, Piet Selye, Anton Rupert, Hilgard Muller, etc. And we're not saying this, it's not that we sucked it out of our thumbs, it's in that, that book of Volksparat, of PJ Pretorius. Now, we're coming to the last part of this teaching, and it's, it's actually for the warriors, especially uh, that's doing the warrior course, the most important part. Because now we are going to look at what are the strong demons, the power demons that you will expect to find in Freemasonry. And I just want to mention here, someone said to me earlier in the day, a lady that, that is attending here today, she said to me when we were speaking this morning about the Jesuits and the Knights Templars, she wanted to leave. She wanted to go home. She didn't want to be here. But now she knows it's not her. It must have been something in her um, that didn't want her to get this revelation about these things. Um, we're looking at Lucifer. That is not Satan himself. It is even not the, the crown prince Lucifer. It is a power demon. And the Antichrist. These are all power demons. Death and destruction. Baal. The sun god. The queen of heaven. The spirit of Freemasonry, Isis, Osiris, and Horus, the false trinity, Baphomet, Mammon, Jezebel, and Ahab. Deception, confusion, mind control. Kundalini and the spirit of the new age. And all of these that we have mentioned here, we didn't get it from a textbook. We have found them in people that we've ministered to. Baphomet, we found him. Baal, often. Queen of heaven, often. Uh, spirit of Freemasonry, often. Mammon, often. All these, you find them when you have to do with, a, with a Freemasonry in a bloodline or in the bondage in someone. Now, let's look at the Lewis curse. Earlier today, we taught you about the Lewis curse that comes on the firstborn male of each and every generation. But now you mustn't be deceived to think, okay, I'm not the firstborn male, so I'm free of that. It goes over on the whole family, but the carrier of it is the firstborn male. Okay. But it goes over on all the children and on, on all the spouses and all the grandchildren and everybody. So everybody is um, affected by the Lewis curse. What does it cause in the body? And this is not a, a full list. It's just what we have already picked up in sessions when we minister to people. This Lewis curse can cause especially back and neck problems. We ministered to a lady um, recently that said her whole spine is dis disintegrating. Her, 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 what is it? The bones in her spine, the, spine, the vertebra, is crumbling. And she's had a couple of fusions already where they had to 
put two, two vertebrae together. You know those operations that they do. But her whole spine is crumbling. And when we spoke to a particular demonic soul cop who's got its roots in Freemasonry, we asked, what are we? no, it was a demon. And we said, but what is happening in the spine? And he said, we are eating away at her spine. We are eating away. The Afrikaans was ons hammer in ons kap, in ons bite. <laughs> so, you know, it sounds, I know, it sounds far-fetched, but it's the reality. Um, headaches and migraines, especially migraines. Arthritis. Arthritis. You can just know if someone has got a serious problem with arthritis. Often the roots are in uh, Freemasonry. Heart problems and heart attacks. High blood pressure and cholesterol. Sugar diabetes. Cancer of all types, especially colon cancer, stomach cancer, pancreas. Um, in the woman of the, the female organs of the womb, um, malignant tumors, prostate cancer. Ask yourself, how, why is so many men in our day and age? Elderly men, why do they? It seems as if all older men get prostate cancer. Where does it come from? Is that the Lord's will? Is this how Jesus created us? Sickle cell anemia, bone diseases, any bone diseases, blood and respiratory diseases, etc., etc., etc. It's not only limited to that. In the body, still chronic female problems. Now, you know what? If people struggle to have a child and they, they seemingly are unable to have a child, you, you can just know. In that, in that um, Warrior School Module 7, the testimony of Nadine DeWitt as well, she's, she testified there that she was unable to conceive a child. And then when the curse of Freemasonry was broken over her, she conceived. And she, she also was able to carry that child uh, for the full term, whereas with the previous attempts, there were always miscarriages. So um, if, you, if you hear people have a lot of miscarriages, you know, it's the one miscarriage upon the other, you can just know. It's spiritual. There's a spiritual reason behind that. Um, severe PMS, uh, menstrual uh, pain, and cramps during the monthly cycle. We've heard that also from the mouth of demonic soul copies that they say we want to give her extreme pain when she's in her cycle. Extreme pain. Tumors and growths, cysts in the abdomen, wombs and ovaries, and hysterectomy. It actually leads to the point of hysterectomy. And another lady that we ministered to a while ago, it was actually in one of these training sessions on a Sunday. And we found, I think it was her own father, if I recall correctly, was a Freemason in her. And um, he was already deceased. And when we said, what do you cause in her? He said, infertility. And we said, well, did you succeed? He said, yes, it's done. It's done already. It's done. They don't have any children. And when we said, what do you mean with it's done? <clears throat> he said, she had a hysterectomy already. So we, we did it. So, and it's logical. What does the enemy want to do? If he knows this is a godly bloodline, and there's, there's people that will be in your bloodline below you, your children and your grandchildren, who will do great exploits for the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, the, the enemy will try and prevent those children from being born. Tumors and growths that we've already dealt with, breast and womb cancer. Fallopian tube infections and ill-operating ovaries. In the soul, mind, and emotions, depression. We often hear that depression is, co is caused by, amongst others, Freemasonry. Not only Freemasonry, bipolar depression. Don't we find this in our society? Every second person that you speak to is on chronic medication for some sort of depression. Uh, manic, manic depression, yeah. Or they say bipolar depression with manic um, tendencies. Suicidal thoughts, anxiety and fear that reaches actually the state of paranoia. Hearing of voices. Now this is a big revelation. Schizophrenia. The, the psychiatrists will tell you that schizophrenia, in, in, that, in that psychotic illness, people hear voices and they hear it to the extent. That's that beautiful mind uh, movie. I don't know who of you have watched it where it becomes so bad that they lose track of reality altogether and then they become, uh, they, they hallucinate. 
They hallucinate. And they see things that do not exist. They hear people talking to them that do not exist. Now, we have often heard in ministry that demonic soul copies say, we want them to hear voices constantly so that they will become mad. They will lose their mind. Doesn't that sound to you like schizophrenia? Okay. So, you know, it gives us answers from a Christian perspective because we ask these questions, Lord, where does these things come from? Why do good Christian people suffer from these things? Stress and tension, Alzheimer's, that's the other thing, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, yeah. ADHD, how many children these days suffer from ADHD? They can't focus, they're hyperactive, all those things. You, me, to, when I was a child, we didn't even hear of it. But now it is so frequent. I, I'm, I'm feeling sorry for the teachers in the primary schools because I'm sure they, they're pulling all their head out of their heads. They don't know what to do with the children because every second child has got so-called ADHD. They are on Ritalin. Lack of discipline. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Inability to concentrate and focus and hyperactiveness. And in one lady, um, the demonic soul copy came out and they said, we asked, what do you do in their children, in her children? Because he admitted he's already in her children. We said, what do you do there? He said, I cause ADHD. And we said, why do you want to do that? He said, we want to keep them dumb. We want to keep them from learning. Um, dyslexia, hyperactiveness, we've dealt with that. Financially. Now, the Lewis curse has got a tremendous effect financially on people. And this also brings an answer to many of us that know of people that have been struggling all their lives financially, they cannot seemingly get any breakthroughs. And it just makes sense because if you are a Freemason and Lucifer looks after his own children and you get all the business contracts and all the deals and you prosper financially, obviously when you become a Christian and the curse is not broken, the enemy will try to keep you in financial poverty. So we say poverty, debt, bankruptcy, a lack of gain in the family, the inability to find or keep a job, layoffs, the inability to establish profitable employ, especially, we, especially where no logical explanation or answer exists. No escape from the unexpected bills, accidents that cause more medical bills, physical loss of money through carelessness, theft, mugging, robbery, high interest rates, car breakdowns, and or mechanical malfunctions. The mishandling of money, business failure, etc. And then also a poverty mentality. People believing I will never get ahead. I will never prosper financially. I will always be poor. It's a poverty mentality. A constant lack, bad debts and, and destruction is a consequential curse. Now, we're not saying we should go into paranoia. You could also, by way of your own bad decisions, you know, um, cause your own financial bankruptcy. So it, it's not always a curse. It's not always the Lewis curse. But in many instances, it is. Especially where it doesn't make sense. You know, you, you find sometimes people, then it's good people of God. They struggle all their lives. And it's not something that they do wrong. It's just they never get that deal that they should have got. There's always a, a, a barrier. Um, if, if there's three people applying for the job, they're not the one that gets it. Um, if there's people that need to be laid off at work, they get laid off. It's as if they always, always are on the wrong side. So then you must start ask, to ask questions. Marital and relationship problems. This is a, also a very good sign of the Lewis curse. Extramarital affairs, adultery, where you find that in a bloodline. Divorce and separation, the inability to form and maintain healthy personal relationships, continuous arguments, fights, and quarreling. No relationship between family members. And don't we see that often in our day and age? And we find that often. If you talk to pe Christian people and you ask them, uh, do you still ha um, have contact with your brothers and sisters or your family mem members, even your mother and father, the answer comes comes, no, we don't have any relationship. We don't see each other. We don't talk. And we often hear that. And it's a strategy of the enemy. He wants to disconnect people. He wants to cut off that relationships. Um, not getting married, the inability to find a soulmate. 
That's also a strategy of the enemy because he knows your bloodline is godly. He doesn't want you to find the, the, the husband that the Lord has, has uh, selected for you because then from that union, a whole bloodly, a whole godly bloodline will continue. So that's one of the strategies. That, that maybe explains to us why some people never find their soulmate and they, they remain, they become spinsters. Ne? And what is the no? bachelors and spinsters? No, and you know, you find that in some bloodlines you will see. The sister never got married, the blood, brother never got married. It, then it doesn't make sense. No offspring due to isolation and inability to form a lasting relationship. Sexual immorality and impurity. I'm just going to run through this quickly. Lust, extramarital sexual intercourse, homosexuality, lesbianism. Homosexuality has got a lot to do with Freemasonry in the bloodlines. And homosexuality can be healed completely by Jesus and washed clean by his blood. Those people can be set free if they are prepared to open themselves up to the truth of Jesus and to allow Jesus to wash them with his blood and to break with their bad habits and to renew their minds. Pornography, sexual perversity, sexual problems, coldness or impotence, molestation, pedophilia, bestiality, incest, rape and sodomization, etc., etc. Accidents and premature death. Don't all of us know of either our own family bloodlines or other, fami other bloodlines, other families, where there's a lot of premature deaths, accidents, weird accidents, strange deaths that you can't, you, you just think, but how could this happen? We look at stillborn babies, death of children. I mean, it can never be in Jesus' will that a small child must die. Why? Why did he create that child then in the first place? And you know, it was so strange and funny. When we were children, often we heard at funerals, the, the minister would say something like, our God came and he, he plucked the most beautiful flower for his garden. No. No, it's the enemy that came to steal. Freak accidents of any kind. Accident proneness. You get people that just, they will testify and say, oh, I'm always in accidents. Either I burn myself or I cut myself or I fall or I just walk on a pavement and I break my ankle. Or I, why does it happen to some people all the time and not to others? So accident proneness, early or premature death of people in the best part of their lives, unusual deaths, suicide, and abortion. But before we get to abortion... Um, Motor vehicle accidents as well. In this ministry, we have learned there's no such thing as a coincidence of a motor vehicle accident. Each motor vehicle accident is planned by the enemy. In the spiritual realm, it's, 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 it's connected. Things connect and they cause the accident. That motor vehicle accident is never an accident. It may appear like an accident. Okay. Um, abortion. Yo. Oh. There's nothing that saddens me personally as much as abortion. Um, like Jayas became emotional earlier today about you know what's happening in the new, uh, in the world through Freemasonry. I, if I think of abortion, I want to cry because we are killing our own babies. Isn't that sun god worship? Isn't that sacrificing of our own firstborn children? Often the firstborn, because it often happens when people are still young; they're not married. They get a big fright when they get um, pregnant and they are scared of what people are going to think of them. Abortion. Isn't that sacrifice of our babies to the sun god? And especially in the bloodlines where Freemasonry are. It's sun god worship. And we're not condemning anybody who had an abortion. Jesus can free us of anything. He can heal you. He forgives you. He forgives everybody that already had an abortion. It's not about that. It's about what is behind that in the spirit. We must start to realize what is behind that. The spiritual consequences. Often we hear people say to us in ministry, I experience a spiritual block. I know I'm saved. I know I will go to heaven when I die. But other than that, there's nothing. If you talk about spiritual growth and revelation from Jesus and experiencing the gifts of the Spirit and all that, I cannot testify of that. I just don't experience that. To me, it feels like a spiritual block. If I read from the Bible, to me, it's just words on paper. 
And when I close the Bible, I cannot even remember 10 minutes later what I've read. So it means nothing. If I pray, it seems to me I cannot connect with Jesus. It seems as if there's a wall between me and God. Um, they struggle to worship. Some people cannot worship. They've got nothing against worship, but they themselves, they cannot worship. The inability to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, especially the speaking in tongues. The inability to experience the working of the Holy Spirit. It also causes religion, tradition, and dogma. And it explains to you perhaps why some people, although they are Christian and they've been reborn in Christ, they cannot, they seem to be unable to get out of their religion. They cannot see the truth of the baptism of believers. That the baby baptism is not the true baptism of Jesus, but it's the baptism of believers by full immersion in water. They cannot see that truth. It's as if there's a spiritual veil. Deception, confusion, and mind control. And if the kundalini is in your bloodlines and you have got the Lewis curse, you are much more susceptible to the kundalini spirit. So that explains to you when people who are ministering with kundalini and they pray over the people or they you know, now do, do something like this and say, fire on you all, fire. That's false fire. It's not Jesus' fire most of the times. Fire, like Benny in fire. <laughs> and then the people must fall. Some people don't fall, and others fall. Why? Bloodlines. Some people have already got the kundalini spirit in them. Some have already got that seed of kundalini. So they're much more susceptible, and others, by the grace of God, not. So it's more difficult, but it's not to say they cannot also get the kundalini spirit if they open themselves up for it. Then doubt and insecurity. So what is our advice to disciples of Jesus Christ? Those of you that are already active disciples of Jesus, active meaning you are involved in setting the captives free. Those are all the warriors that are in the warrior school, but also the other people who attend here. We say you cannot go wrong. When you minister to someone, if you pray with someone, to, to um, suggest to them, let's break the curse of Freemasonry. Even if you don't in particular pick it up, because what have we learned today? 90% or more of people have the curse of Freemasonry in their bloodlines. So break the curse. And we say even in the beginning of the process. And we say, you will see it tomorrow when we demonstrate it to you. It's best to break the curse at conception in the womb. We'll talk to you more about that tomorrow. That's the best way. Jesus showed us through his Holy Spirit. That's the best way. We ask him by the power of his Holy Spirit to take you only in the Spirit back to your point of conception in your mother's womb. And then there at that point of conception where all those seeds fell of the bloodline curses, at the point of conception, we ask the Lord to break the curses there at that point of conception. We say you must always test for demons of Freemasonry and demonic soul copies. So don't think you can just break the curse and that's it. The demons will not necessarily leave. They can maybe be starved out of your system over a long period, but if they are strong, they will remain. The demonic soul copies will also remain. They will not necessarily go out. We will ask tomorrow, tomorrow during the prayer, at the end of the prayer, that the Lord will rip them out. We will ask. Some of them go. Some of them that are very strong. Stay behind. We, we, we don't know why. We just find it. It often happens that they stay, stay behind. And when they then come out and we ask them, why didn't you go? When we ask Jesus to rip you out, we get the answer like, I didn't want to. My work is not yet finished. Or I'm too strong. Okay? But we will trust Jesus to take them out tomorrow. If you see there are demons, if you test the demons and you see they manifest quite strongly but they don't want to leave, you cast them out, they don't want to go. We've seen that in ministry. Then we would, for example, say spirit of Freemasonry, come out and we cast you out. And then the, the demon heavily manifests even hurting the person, but it doesn't want to go out. Often it is because there are still demonic soul copies in that person of Freemasonry that holds on to the demons. They cannot go because there's strong demonic soul copies holding them on, onto them. Then you must t test the demonic soul copies first. Okay, so it's very important for all people who want to be active disciples Disciples of Jesus, you must familiarize yourself with the concept of demonic soul copies. We want to say this, 
And I think we are allowed to say this. If you don't know about demonic soul copies and you minister to other people, there will be a, a, a ceiling of where that person will get free. They will get free to a certain extent, but if the demonic soul copies remain, they will still remain in some level of bondage. And that maybe explains to us why in the past some people would testify and say, you know, I went for so, so much deliverance. So many people prayed for me. And I experienced healing and breakthroughs. But it wasn't complete. They're still, I'm still in bondage. Why? Maybe the demonic soul copies is a key that our Lord wants to show us. The function of demonic soul copies that are Freemasons are usually to keep the curse in place. And then we say, see ignited in Christ's prayer renunciation. It's at the back of your booklets as well. But tomorrow we will pray it over all of you. And we will, we will speak about this, um, what's going to happen tomorrow at the end, a bit more. But let's look at Walter Fights, um, what he said here. He said, a mason is nothing other than a harborer of the occult knowledge clothing themselves with all their good deeds and their many members whom they use maliciously and lie to so that they may appear noble. And then he says, these people are wicked at the highest level. And we agree with him. We agree. So we have come to the closing of our teaching. I just want to deal with the following quickly. Um, we acknowledge the following people that we have used as, as sources as well for this teaching. Steve Warrell Clay. Um, he wrote Freemasonry, the Secret Language. Jack Harris, Freemasonry, the Invisible Cult. That's a book. Ron Rhodes, he, he wrote Find It Quick Handbook on Cults and New Religions. Walter Fight, he's got a whole DVD series that he calls Amazing Discoveries. And we have specifically looked at the secret behind secret societies. That is an excellent range of DVDs. If you can get hold of Walter Fight's DVDs, really, it's excellent. He is a Seventh-day Adventist. But, you know, as they say, um, eat the fish and spit out the bones. No. But his DVDs, this range of amazing discoveries is excellent. Um, Eben Swart of Trumpet Call Ministries, he has got... Um, two videos on YouTube that you can download for free from the internet um, that is called The False Priesterdom. The False Priesterdom. And that is about Freemasonry in our churches, in our Afrikaner churches. So if you can get this, Google it on YouTube and download it for free. And you can look at that. Um, and then also, Eben has got a whole range of DVDs on Freemasonry. And actually, he goes into a lot of depth as well there. So we will recommend that to you. You can go to his website called Trumpet Call Ministries and order the DVDs from there. We just looked at Amanda Bice's teaching about Freemasonry as well on her website of Kanon Ministries, but we didn't use a lot of that, but we did integrate here and there something. And then Denise Woods' book, Reaping the Whirlwind, Advocate PJ Pretorius Volksverrat. That's the major sources. There were also others, but that's the major ones. Copyright, we just need to always emphasize this. The booklets that you have received today, and that teaching is also on the internet, on our webpage. You can download it for free. And although we say copyright on that booklet, we don't mind if you make physical copies and hand it out to people. All we mean by that copyright is please don't take our name and emblem off and put your own name there and sell it or whatever, because then it's, it's, it's theft. Just, just acknowledge that we have written the document, as we are also acknowledging, acknowledging our sources. But the DVDs, the, the DVDs, and this DVD of Freemasonry as well, that we are busy uh, video recording today, please don't copy any of our DVDs. We know with today's technology it is possible. And we've also heard of some people that have already copied it, and, and it saddened us, because it's people that we know well, and we didn't expect it of them. You know, we must become zero tolerant to any compromise. The Lord in his word said, Moses said you may not murder someone. Eh? But I say to you, if you even look at someone and hate him, you have already murdered him in your heart. Eh? 
So the same, we think of theft as walking into a shop and taking something off the shelf, not paying and walking out. But if you know that someone doesn't want you to copy their DVDs and you do it, it's also theft. Theft is theft. So please don't do that because we are also concerned for your sake. Because any sin opens doors in your life, gives the enemy access. Don't do that. We have to be zero. We have, we do not, we, we shouldn't have any compromise in our lives with any sin. Don't do it. Please rather buy more. It is not expensive. We promise you uh, the prices that we ask for these DVDs are very reasonable. It actually just cover our costs, basically. And, um, Rather buy more and hand it out to people where you come. Ask the Lord, where should you sow this into the body of Christ? And then you're also supporting the ministry because it's our only livelihood other than donations. Donations is actually our major, our major income. We trust the Lord for that to be our major income and then also the DVDs. Donations. Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 8, Freely you have received, freely give. So we try in this ministry to, to freely give. When we minister to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, in the evenings, over weekends, we don't charge any fees. Many other ministries ask by the hour. We don't ask anything because Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. But we, we, they, we, we do appeal to you, if the Holy Spirit press on your heart, to support us financially, register as a friend on our webpage and support us with a monthly donation, even if it's just a small amount. You know, uh, We'd rather have a, a lot of small amounts and it's consistent because it makes up a bigger amount and it, and, and, and it, and it supports our ministry than a once-off thing. So whether it's once-off or monthly, if you feel the Holy Spirit presses on your heart to support us financially, we will really appreciate it. Because there's so many things that the Lord um, sub, uh, get, presses on our heart that we should do for His kingdom, but it, it costs money. You know, We can't do everything for free. Uh, for example, to make this DVD. To the video recording, it costs us money. So let us, let us close with a prayer. Directly after the prayer, we will just worship one song. It is sort of the song of our ministry. We are very fond of this song. Um, it is Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Some of you may already know this song. Worship it with us. Let us just close our eyes. Lord Jesus, we come before your throne, Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Lord, and we just want to give you all the honor for today. And Lord, our hearts are full of gratitude and joy. That you have made this possible, Lord, that you have sealed this day off in the Spirit for us to present this teaching and also, Lord, to video record it. And Lord, we know that there's an, there was an air show today at a place nearby. And Lord, really, we give you all the honor, Jesus Christ, that you have sealed us off also against the noise. And that it didn't disrupt us in the way that we expected it would. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for the opportunity today. Thank you, Lord, for all the revelation that you have brought to your body your bride today about Freemasonry so that our eyes can be opened and so that we can be set free, so that we can be the radiant, beautiful bride that you want us to be, free, truly free. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all the truth, all the revelation. Thank you for your grace, Lord, because we know it's only by your grace And by your power, the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, then we also just want to come against any evil spirits, demonic soul copies or demons, who wants to prevent anybody from coming back tomorrow. And we know it's a strategy in the spirit that suddenly some crisis will crop up or something will go wrong or someone will get persuaded by the lie of the enemy that I shouldn't be here tomorrow or it's not necessary or it's not important or I should rather do something else. Lord, we come against all those strategies of the enemy in the spirit now and we cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of his blood and his Holy Spirit. And we declare, Lord, 
that everybody that needs this curse to be broken off of their lives and their children's lives and their bloodlines will be back tomorrow. We declare it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against any breakdowns of motor vehicles. No motor vehicle will break down. There will be no hijackings. There will be no accidents. There will be no personal crises. There will be no illnesses and infirmities. Because the enemy also wants to create sudden infirmities and illnesses to prevent people from coming back. We cancel those strategies in the name of Jesus. We plead your blood, Jesus, over everybody that is here and also over everybody that is listening to the DVD. We plead your blood over their spirit, soul, and body. We ask, Lord, that you will protect them with a hedge of fire that is unpenetrable to the enemy. And we bind the enemy within. We bind any, every demonic soul copy and every demon that may still be in their soul dimensions and bodies, preventing them from living a life of full victory in you. We bind them in Jesus' name. You will remain bound until we have dealt with the prayer tomorrow. You will remain bound. You will not prevent God's children from being set free. Lord, again, we just give all the honor and the glory to you, Jesus. Father, our Father, Jesus and Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to you. Let your name be glorified, Jesus. Let your kingdom come on earth as it already exists in heaven. All of this we declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.